Hi everyone, and welcome to uh, Major Migrations Made Easy. My name's Tim Tobik, and I um, have recently switched to Modern just, uh, just at the start of this year. But before I switched to Modern, I was a consultant for five years, and perhaps much like yourselves. I specialized in migration engineering, which is a way of saying I would walk into an organization, familiarize myself with all the old technology that they were still using, and then hack away at lifting everything up to the latest versions. I would frequently find five to even 10 year old versions of Java and the JUnit this spring, which is not great from a security point of view or even for the developer experience. Initially, I would migrate these services by hand and gradually introduce more and more coarse grained automations. But uh, so imagine my excitement well, a year ago when I discovered Open Rewrite. Open Rewrite promises to make light work of all such migrations. I got so excited by this technology that I started to contribute and even present about this topic, and eventually quit my job to work on Open Rewrite full time. So, after a nice sabbatical, that brings us here today. And perhaps you've faced some of the same challenges that I did. At a conference like this, you'll hear all about the latest framework and language features, yet Back at work, you're stuck using Java 8 and uh, JUnit 4. And migrating all of that by hand can seem daunting, if it ever gets priority. I want to show you how easy it can be to perform such major migrations. That way, you too can adopt all the latest language and framework features. And it can be fun to pick up new language features, such as records and text blocks, but you don't want to adopt these features manually or only on a single project. Instead, we will look into automation to make old projects feel like new projects again, rather than an application that's merely had its version number changed. And that way you can benefit from JVM language and framework improvements. Here's a brief overview of the types of migrations I'll be talking about. Likely, you've already performed some of these migrations in the past. And other migrations are always just around the corner. If you look back over time, there's a near constant stream of worthwhile improvements to pick up. And I like the challenge. I still get excited whenever a new version comes out. I just don't like the repetitive elements that come with upgrading. And if you try to keep up by hand, you will hardly get anything else done. Especially as microservices these days mean you're not just upgrading once, but dozens of times. Automation may be the only option, especially for large organizations maintaining thousands of services. Through Open Rewind, you can now upgrade between versions of Java and Spring with a simple command. You can even migrate between frameworks, such as from JUnit to AssertJ, and even from Java EE to Spring. In this talk, I'll tell you all about Open Rewind, how it came about, how it works, and what you can do with it. And finally, we'll briefly look at who's developing these recipes and how to apply them to open source projects. Open Rewind was started at Netflix, initially to aid in the migration of an internal logging framework to SLF4J. You can probably imagine that any logging framework is going to be pervasive throughout an organization. To even consider migrating, you'd need perfectly accurate automation, especially when usage is spread across hundreds of services. So they developed a parser to accurately read uh, Java and turn source code into a lossless semantic tree. This model can then be modified to replace the old logging statements with calls to SLF4J. And next, the migrated model is written out as close as possible to the original source code. This way, the applied changes are minimal, leaving surrounding code untouched. Later, the same developers moved on to work on Spinnaker. And while trying to onboard teams and organizations there, they found that teams often struggled with these same outdated libraries and frameworks. To help these teams adopt the latest versions, they applied a different set of transformations through the same lossless semantic tree parser. This allowed them to quickly reduce this technical debt, bringing teams from Spring Boot 1 to 2, and from JUnit 4 to JUnit 5. 
The project has since been open sourced, with the company behind it committed to making all recipes available under the Apache license for open source software. The initial focus for Open Rewrite is on Java virtual machine languages and surrounding technologies. There are parsers for Java, Groovy, YAML and XML. And these in turn unlock support for build tools such as Maven and Gradle, and libraries such as JUnit, AssertJ and Guava. Ultimately, refactoring entire frameworks and platforms is supported, with recipes available for application frameworks such as Spring, Quarkus and Micronaut. Open Rewind is not the only parser capable of understanding and manipulating Java. However, three features set Open Rewind apart from the competition. The first is the focus on exact type attribution. By having the exact type available on any tree element, we can be sure to only manipulate exact matches. The second characteristic that sets Open Rewind apart is the format preservation. The parser not only takes into account the functional code, but also the surrounding code style and indentation. This allows us to accurately reproduce your source file, regardless of further changes. Any changes made through Open Rewrite look just like a colleague worked on your code. And finally, our serialization format ensures you're able to refactor your code faster and at scale. Together, these features make OpenRewrite exceptionally good at safe code transformations. The changes are minimally invasive and guaranteed to work, in part due to our do-no-harm mentality. By manipulating the full lossless semantic tree, OpenRewrite can far exceed simple search and replace operations. With the full lossless semantic tree built, we need to instruct OpenRewrite what operations to apply and where to apply them in your code. Recipes are how you define such a group of search and refactoring operations. Together, they accomplish a higher level task, such as the framework migration. Recipes can consist of a single, standalone operation, or be linked together with other recipes. Open Rewrite comes with a large collection of fine-grained recipes out of the box that can be combined for common migration steps. You can think of these as Lego building blocks, ready to be applied with the proper parameters. There are hundreds of these building blocks to, for instance, change types, change methods, change arguments, manipulate properties and alter dependencies and plugins. Individual recipes are implemented as Java visitors that first match and then modify elements of the lossless semantic tree. There are plenty of examples available, but note that you only need a dedicated Java visitor when none of the existing recipes can already achieve your goals. Typically, you can get very far only configuring, combining and applying existing recipes through a YAML description file. Modules then group to combine and group together these fine-grained recipes into more coarse-grained, application-specific recipes. There are modules, for example, for logging frameworks, testing frameworks, and application frameworks, such as Spring. Think of these as Lego sets, with build plans for common migrations and fixes, ready to be used. In my opinion, the lossless semantic tree, combined with a large collection of open source recipes, is what sets OpenRewrite apart from other similar tools, such as Google Error-Prone's Refaster. Now I want to show you how migration recipes are configured in Open Rewind. Let's briefly look at a migration from JUnit 4 to JUnit 5. I want you to imagine what steps would be needed for such a migration. You likely know a couple of those steps already. Among others, you would have to update the test annotations. But you would also have to update the assertions and sometimes their argument orders. You'd have to update all imports, you have to update any test rules, and that's just getting started. Notice how each step is reflected as a separate, separate rep recipe in this YAML configuration file. Some refer to and configure generic steps, such as the change type recipe. Others are implemented as an imperative step, a dedicated Java visitor that changes the lossless semantic tree. All these steps combine to achieve a complete JUnit 5 migration. And this is a common pattern with OpenRewind. 
large migrations are broken up into small reusable steps. When we run this recipe, we get predictable results. Our imports are replaced as we would expect, and our Mokito runner is converted into using the extension. Lifecycle annotations, such as at before, are correctly replaced. But interestingly, we can see how Open Rewind shines through when it comes to converting expected exceptions. Having the full power of a lossless semantic tree, combined with a Java Vista, allows us to adopt assert throws. Uh, this would not be possible with a regular expression approach. And it's just a small sample of the types of migrations that are possible with Open Rewind. Running migration recipes is fairly straightforward. First, you apply a build tool plugin for Open Rewind. I've used Maven in this example, but Gradle works just as well. Then, depending on the changes you want to make, you can add a dependency on the respective Open Rewind module. And lastly, you run the Open Rewind plugin with the migration recipe that you want to execute. The command seen here will migrate a Spring application to the latest version. And this works all the way back to Spring Boot 1.5. It will update dependencies, properties, and deprecations from any older versions. And it includes the JUnit 5 migration seen before, as well as any Spring-specific test constructs. So now that we've seen how Open Rewrite works, let's have a look at what you can do with it. Obviously, by now, we've seen that it is well suited to migrations. You've mostly seen migrations from one version to another, but you can also migrate from one framework to another. If you want to switch between from log4j to slf4j, you can. And the same thing if you want to switch between JUnit and assertj. And even larger migrations are in development. Another application is fixing static analysis findings. A large collection of check style, sonar, and security findings is, are supported to allow you to reduce your technical depth in minutes. And finally, there's a whole class of recipes to enforce a code style. And rather than merely apply a formatter, these style recipes go a step further to actually change your code. This ensures your code style reads consistently from project to project. And in addition to what's already available, it's fairly easy to add custom recipes specific to your project. So now that we've seen how it works and what it can do, let's briefly look ahead at what is still to come. As you've seen, Open Rewind has dedicated parsers for multiple languages already. But as you can imagine, we have some catching up to do still. We are working on a parser for both uh, Java 20 and up and Kotlin. And note that you're perfectly able to run on Java 17 plus, but you cannot yet migrate to some of the new language features. The interesting thing about Kotlin is going to be that Java migration recipes will also just work, even though the languages look a bit different. And we're testing this right now with the developers behind the uh, Kotlin Arrow framework to uh, support their migration to the next the major version. We're also working on a CLI to make it easier to run Open Rewrite without changing your build files, and using this to, for instance, integrate with GitHub Actions and GitLab CI. We're also branching out into different language families to support Python and TypeScript. And we have Knut here in the, in the audience who's working on refaster-like templates to make it easier to define the before and after state of the migration recipes that you want to execute. All of these features um, are in active development. It's not exactly clear when you can use some of this, but it's interesting developments nonetheless. As a last subject, I want to tell you a bit more about the company behind Open Rewind. As I said before, Modern has committed to making all recipes available under the Apache license for open source software. Our focus is on applying recipes at scale. Through Modern, clients can discover code patterns across an entire organization and target these for transformation. And even if you're not a paying customer, you can still use our web interface to browse available recipes and even apply them to open source projects. And this can be a great way to start contributing back to open source software. And if you find that any migration recipes are missing, 
OpenVRAD itself is very accepting of uh, new contributions. The community plays a large role in the development of new recipes. Now, as you could probably tell from my email address, we're not exactly a big company, but we're pretty well connected in the, the, into the broader Java community. Through collaborations, other companies uh, contribute migration recipes for their frameworks. And these ensure that their users are able to migrate easily and timely with new releases. And if you maintain or merely enjoy a particular library or framework, you can help all other users by providing migration recipes. And so with that, we are getting near the end of my presentation. If before I send you on your way, I want to recommend a few resources where you can learn more. Firstly, there's extensive documentation and tutorials available on Open Rewrite. Our development is all on GitHub, with new suggestions picked up with surprising speed. And as we've already seen, it's quite easy to contribute minor migration steps. If you want to try some recipes quickly on open source projects, have a look at public.moderna.io. And if you have any questions, you can reach out uh, on our public Slack or via email. And finally, if you want to play around with the commands you've, uh, I've shown uh, before, I've written a blog post to accompany this presentation. The blog post migrates an old Spring Pet Connect branch from Spring Boot 1.5 on Java 8, all the way to the latest versions on Java 17. That way you can play around with the commands and see the changes that are made at every step. For your own projects, I recommend you start with the testing framework migrations. They are an easy way to get started and to gain confidence in the tool and see what it can then do for your projects. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. Are there any questions? Not seeing much. Then uh, thanks again. And if uh, I'm all around all day, so just come find me uh, in the hallway as well. Thank you.